Another stranger passing through Riverwood. Off on the next adventure, hmm? Fair enough. But if you're seeking excitement and riches, this ain't the place, I'm afraid. Riverwood does have its charms, but I imagine they're not quite what you're looking for. <laughs> Vandal and Sven keep things interesting from day to day with their bickering. But it's not all bad. It's peaceful. Quiet. The most exciting thing to happen here in recent memory was a drunken brawl over two cheese wheels and a chicken. It must be a Nord thing. In any case, I'm glad to have some time, and more importantly respite, from the world. Hmm. Here's the same as anywhere else, I suppose. Why not? The Riverwood type? <laughs> it's okay, stranger. I know what you mean. You're correct. I am no farmhand or errand boy. I am... or was... a soldier. But that life is behind me now. I've taken a few beatings in my time. You've got a good sense for it, that's for sure. I can tell you, if you'd like. But let's get somewhere more comfortable first. Come, follow me. I do apologize for the pace. My leg isn't quite what it used to be. There we go. Let's make this absolutely clear. I don't know who you are or how you found me, but if you try anything, I will kill you. The Dominion pays well, of that I have no doubt. But even a cripple can still hold a blade. Mercenaries come in many guises, so you'll have to forgive me for not taking you at your word. How much did they pay you, hmm? Your weight in jewels? The promise of an emissary's position? You're an idiot if you think the Dominion keeps its word. Until I see evidence to the contrary, I have no reason to believe you. Riverwood is a quiet town. Good people here. And I won't let you change that. Uh, maybe so. But why did you approach me in the first place? I have no errands for you to run, no gold to spare. The only thing I have in abundance now is time. <clears throat> Very well. You seem honest enough. Let's sit down first. Then you can ask me whatever you'd like. My leg has started cramping again, as it is. I hope you'll not begrudge a veteran for being careful. But it pays to look out for one's enemies, no matter how long it's been. No. If there's anything I know for certain, it's that the Thalmor never forget those who cross them. Even a sleepy village like Riverwood can attract unwanted attention, if you're not careful. <laughs> the better question is, what didn't we do? I'm from a small hamlet on the edge of Alakir. Conditions could be worse than Morrowinds at times. 
But it was honest, and life made sense. But there's too much bad blood there now. Too many bad memories. Not just me, but for us all. The Dominion, of course. I was still half a boy at that age. Bullheaded. Rash. But I wanted to make a difference. Help the fight against elven supremacy. Ugh. Valmor forces were already in Hammerfell before the Great War had officially started. So I began working with a local band across the Alakir. Must have been quite a shock to the elves. To come from lush grasslands and comfort to nothing but desolate wastes as far as the eye can see. Lutes and poetry weren't going to be much help there. <laughs> There's an old saying that the sands swallow all. We'd use the storms to cover our approach, and strike quickly before they had a chance to react. Most of us were just pulled from local settlements. Men and women that had been thrown into warfare with only basic martial training. But we made it work. Fought as hard as anything to keep our home. For a time, we had some close calls, and magic is always an unknown in combat. But we fought hard, won a few victories, even joined a battle near the entrance of Montalion. That was chaos if I ever saw it. Soon enough, the locals who had barely learned to hold the right end of a blade were veterans, forged through blood and war. Of course, we might not have known each other at the start, but going through that together brought a kind of bond. A mutual understanding of everything we'd been through and faced. Good soldiers are worth their weight in gold. Soon enough, we went our separate ways, summoned off to different patrols. The war was gripping all of Tamriel by this point, and even the nobles understood that we couldn't be getting much help from the outside. I had taken a poison arrow during one of the last night raids, and was recovering in Sentinel. A short respite from battle, but a welcome one. As any soldier can tell you, you take whatever sleep you can get. A lot of wounded in the city, but the guard kept it together, and the dominion off our backs. No. In fact, it was quite the opposite. While recovering and visiting some friends, I was approached by one of the forebearers. The siege had recently been broken, and finally it seemed like the two were going to get their heads out of the sand. She was all blood, respected in the city, and as a joint effort with the crowns, they organized a warband. By Satakal, it seemed someone got the idea that I should be picked to lead them. <laughs> It was. Something like that doesn't come around every day. Strictly need to know, armed with the best gear Hammerfell Gold could buy, to strike fear in any who dared to cross into our lands. Of course, I may have been injured, but those few weeks hadn't made me go soft. I was eager to get back into the field and tear the Dominion a new one. We shook hands and the next day I went to meet them. My people. We met in an old ruin beneath the city, only a few guards on hand. Introductions were made, plans laid out, and we toasted, even as Dominion spells pummeled the gates outside. As for my fellows, well, I could tell we were going to get along just fine. <laughs> we headed out next morning. Some of the finest men and women I've ever known. War has a tendency to make or break a person, but these ones... I don't know if you fought in a war, Traveler. 
real war. But if you're lucky, every once in a while, you'll come into contact with someone who just has it. Skill, luck, bit of the gods on their side. I don't know, but each and every one of them was like fury itself in battle. We were the very best Hammerfell had to offer, and we were going to make Thalmor pay their tribute in blood. <laughs> Our frontal team was led by an enormous Pomarat, gold flecks tinting a mane that had been decades in the making. From what I've heard, they're a rare sight outside of the Khajiit's homeland. But if you saw him fight, you'd understand why I was glad to have him on our side. <laughs> a lot of great warriors out there, but few would dare risk locking blades with someone like him. More than once, he'd lean forward and sink his fangs into the enemy's face. Rip their throat out, even. The Thalmor never saw it coming. <laughs> uh... Outside of battle, though, Saja was a quiet one. He was content to keep watch while the rest of us slept, meditating under the moons. <coughs> Alongside Saja and I, there was an old man, Arlund, disgraced son of one of the minor houses, or some such thing. It didn't seem to matter to him, of course. And certainly not us, but by the sands could that man fight. He already has been lost to history for as long as anyone can remember, but he captured even the smallest fragment of what the Arnshai once were. Sword singers. <laughs> Never seen anyone before or since handle a blade quite like he could. A damn fool could be grouchy, and wave take you if you interrupted his battle preparations. But he was a dear friend. Not content to live out his days in bed, he fought to the last. Hmm. With the three of us diving into the thick of it, we had support from all sides to protect our flank. First was the Bosma, Nihilus. I've never been to Valenwood, but the way he held a bow was a work of art. He was small, but he could use that to his advantage dropping down before a patrol even had a chance to react. Before he'd even touch the ground, three arrows would find their mark. But he was always disappointed it couldn't be four. <laughs> a bit mad. He loved taking scalps wherever he could, but he moved like water and saved our hides on more than one occasion. Next was Kara, Ultimer Battle Mage. Yes. Surprising, no? <laughs> Fate must have had a sense of humor, sending someone of that caliber into the arms of the Resistance. She could tear any of her kin apart with a spell, and took pleasure in it, too. Kara never told us what had brought her from Eleanor, but then again, we never asked. <laughs> she was a firebrand, all right. And gods protect you if you said anything about her heritage or homeland. Of course. She made her allegiance clear from the moment we met, and we never had any reason to doubt her. It was always very matter-of-fact with her. Anything that needed to be done, got done. She'd crawl out of oblivion itself if it'd get her home back. There was Sunvar. I suppose you'd call him our healer, although he personally hated the term. Sure, he knew some restoration magic and could whip up a polstice in the field, but his real skill laid in alchemy. More than once, we'd stop on the road only to find that he wandered off to collect supplies a few leagues back. <laughs> Oils, poison, explosives, you name it. He had a knack for the stuff, surprising for a Nord. But that was our merry band all around, wasn't it? <laughs> Finally, there was Tan, the only one I knew before the war, but I... I would prefer not to speak of her. We were... a family... of sorts. Any commander can send new blood to their death. 
I suppose it was a luxury that I could come to know them at all. Trust them. Madness had brought us together, but they were all good people. Honest. Even under difficult conditions, there was never a shred of doubt. I have been fortunate to fight alongside people I'd gladly die for. Even more so, to have walked away from that war at all. It was simple, really. Disrupt Dominion activities wherever we could. At first it was mostly helping protect the roads or the occasional emissary. As the war progressed, we were given more specific tasks. Sabotage and the like. Distinguishing fires, slitting throats as the Thalmor slept, and disappear before the first light. Soon enough, a bit of a legend began to develop. The ghosts of Ban Karai. Deadly wraiths waiting in the reaches of the Alakir. <laughs> I believe it was the locals that had started the tale. A superstition after patrols no doubt failed to return. It was all nonsense, of course. But as far as we were concerned... Anything to shake the Dominion's resolve had its uses. No one, no matter how skilled at tracking, knows the wastes better than my people. And we used that to our advantage, but we referred to ourselves by our own name. Enough time has passed that the name is now only that. But once the Resistance only had to utter it to make captured spies cave. <laughs> We weren't suited to attrition or open warfare. Thousands and thousands charging at each other in an open plain. Our strengths lay in quick, ruthless attacks. Give everything we had and move out before any scouts nearby showed. A fireball to scatter mounted soldiers, arrows from an elevated point. Then the rest of us moved in to clear up. The Thalmor showed no mercy. So why would we show them any in return? I'll admit, it was not without its own entertainment from time to time. Most stories coming out of the rest of the province were bleak, but we were eager to pay the Thalmor back in kind. Maybe that says something about us, that we're messed up. Truth is, though, I don't really give a damn. Yes. By then it seemed like all Tamriel had fought to a standstill, but the war just dragged on. Our party was moving around Hammerfell more freely, but we could only be in one place at a time. Let one village burn so you can help protect another. Assault a war party or keep the Thalmor scouts blind. A hundred lives or a thousand. Simple choices, but so much more to consider. In any case, that's how it was. One morning, we must have been camped by a small oasis. A rider came charging up. We received letters from Sentinel and other cities before, of course. But this was unexpected. We had been ordered to a small village on the border with Cyrodiil to await members of the Dominion Command passing through. Our contact was a bard of all fates, a young Imperial woman by the name of Lavella Dientis. She had been scouting the place out before our arrival. Of course, but the letter was legitimate, and we weren't exactly in a position to refuse with a war going on. Within a couple of days, we'd left the wastes of the Alakir behind us and headed for... greener pastures. When we arrived, it was late at night. But that gave us a bit of time to check the place out. Calling it a village was certainly generous. It was more of a loose collection of hovels than anything else. A couple of houses, a run-down farm on the eastern edges, and your typical tavern to pull it together. Nothing out of the ordinary. Next morning we headed in and visited the tavern. Our illustrious contact was dressed in finery, playing to bleary-eyed peasants. 
It was all very surreal. Mostly farmers. They appeared to tolerate Dientis' presence as long as she steered clear enough to let them drink in peace. I don't know much about Lutzen singing, but she was clearly skilled. Why it was her? Someone who draw the attention of everyone within a hundred leagues as our contact, though, was beyond me. Anyway, despite some misgivings, there was no sign of the Dominion and the innkeeper's family were decent folk as we settled in. Surprisingly, yes. The letter did turn up something we could use. Diantus told us that a group of emissaries and nobility from Alinor had been traveling with a larger force through the east of Hammerfell. However, the force had split off to move into Skyrim, so these nobles were moving to an encampment in southern Cyrodiil, right into our path. Sure. We knew that killing Thalmor only meant that three would take their place, but any opportunity to disrupt their chain of command would prove useful. Besides, getting targets all in one place was too good to ignore, and after everything we'd seen, we were eager to offer them our hospitality. <laughs> Diantus was eager to get it done and leave the place, but we enjoyed some brief respite. Each day we checked the roads, using the woods to stay unseen. Then, well, the time finally came. As I said, the village was no fortress. There were some makeshift stables that could provide cover from arrows, but not a whole lot else. Most of the villagers heeded my warning and left before the Dominion arrived, but the innkeeper was stubborn. Said that he wouldn't move, even if Baal himself was coming. <laughs> we decided that the best way to draw them out would be to stage an attack in the woods and bring them into the village. Close quarters would be our advantage, and hopefully give us enough time to deal with any spells. Diantis volunteered to play victim of a bandit attack. A little too eagerly, actually. But she was our best hope for getting their attention. All that was left to do was move into position. I waited inside the inn with Saja and Sunvar to play the part of drunken bandits, getting fat off the latest raid and hopefully enough to get the Dominion's attention. Arlund was dressed as a blind old traveler, nursing a drink on the ground just outside with Nilus on the roof or the stables nearby. Kara had a Justicar's outfit, so would move in with the rest of the group as they approached the village. Tanwin, well... She wanted to sit by me, that is the concubine to my dastardly bandit leader. No. Almost from the moment we put it into motion, things began to spin out of control. We had assumed that, once we got their attention, the group would move into the village as one. The Ultima work as single parties. They're not suited to scouting or smaller warbands. They use the Bars Murakajit for that. Numbers weren't a problem provided we could use the surroundings to our advantage, but it was going to be a tough fight. You can imagine what it was like when two Justicars rode in ahead of the group, just as we were getting ready. The only thing we could do, stick to the plan and hope that Diantis would draw in the rest of them. All of us knew the risks, knew what we were in for, but when the two Justicars walked in, no one dared to even breathe. I certainly considered it, but had they managed to get a spell off, it would scatter the rest of the group. Or at the very least, it would blow our disguises trying to deal with the bodies. It wasn't easy, but we had to keep going. The innkeeper could tell something was wrong, but served up the Justicar some drinks. With Satakal's eyes on our side, they'd soon leave or be too drunk to react when we did attack. But those two elves... They decided to come and sit with us instead. I could see that Tanwin wanted to reach across and throttle them. The Justicars just sat down and struck up a conversation. I remember I kept looking between the door straining to hear any movement outside, and Sarja who had one hand on their blade. But the Justicars just sat there, 
ordering more drinks. Maybe they could see we were on edge. Perhaps they just didn't care. Either way, we weren't going anywhere. The innkeeper was ready to move at a moment's notice. The Altima didn't budge. Those of us inside there kept up the act as the just much continued to drink and drink. We hadn't been able to kill them, but it was too much of a risk. Suddenly we heard the bulk of the group moving in. It seemed Diantis had kept her word after all. No sign of Nilus or Kara. I assumed they were in position. No. But arrived, and after a brief pause, a few of the nobles walked in, ordering some wine that the innkeeper had prepared for them especially. They glanced at Saja out of curiosity. There was no sign they recognized us. They were well and truly drunk by that point, having a jest with Sundor, who was just staring at them. His jaw clenched, the Dominion relaxed, and I could even hear one of the guards outside talking with our loot. A Justicar on the table opposite sat down and pulled on her hood, revealing Kara beneath. She was anxious, but there was no way we could talk without drawing unwanted attention. Something was wrong, and we were in deep. It was going to get bloody. The only question was when. mistake to draw the Altima into the tavern. We, uh, I, had underestimated what they'd do. Still, we sat there until one of the nobles came shambling over and started flirting the tavern. Clearly they thought we were simple travelers, and thought to buy a night with her using gold. I kept up the gruff bandit act, giving him some excuse that she was mine or whatever. But he kept pushing. Tanwin was so tense I thought she was about to slam and brushed it off. Until the noble leaned forward and put his hand on her thigh. Tadwin pushed him off of her in disgust, and suddenly, everyone was on their feet. I've been lucky enough to walk away from many situations that would have killed another. But nothing could prepare someone for something like that. Perhaps it was our fault for not going sooner, for not calling the whole thing off. Perhaps it had been doomed from the start. But it doesn't matter. It was too late. The Thalmor was ready to go. The noble indignant and some dog in his home for refusing the likes of him. There was no turning back. Three arrows came tearing through the open windows, hitting the drunks and then the noble, right through the throat. Everyone drew their weapons. I threw my weight forwards, put the table onto its side as a bolt of electricity crackled against it. That damn innkeeper had managed to time his throws with Kara, using some cheap bottles to throw in the yells while she followed up with a fireball. As the smell of burnt flesh ascended us, Tanwin and I leapt out of the nearest window, with Saja bloody and enraged not far behind. It was better than I was expecting, worse than I thought. Lun stood over two soldiers that had been standing guard, but Morthalmor were already running towards us. I could see Nilus on the roof nearby, picking off as many as he could. But we were going to be overrun, and there was only one way out. Sundar stepped out, his hands bloodied from beating one of the drunkard's skulls, and with the wounded innkeeper in tow, the heat from behind us was overwhelming. But we drew our weapons to meet the oncoming horde. I wish it had been. There was no way we'd be able to make it to the trees. The horses the Dominion had arrived on were all gone. We stood back to back, but it was not enough. Our Lund was the first to fall, an arrow through the shoulder, and then a charger's sword. One of the battle mages collapsed the roof under us. I heard him cry as the soldiers moved in. So far, he... He fought through the pain, wielding whatever he could get after losing his weapon. He fell with his kinsman, the innkeeper. Teeth clutched into blood and fury as he pushed his fingers as far as he could through the noble's eye sockets. Tanwin and I were protecting each other's flanks, our sabers bloodied by elven filth. But no matter how hard we fought, it wasn't enough. One by one, I watched my party die, even as more of the time poured into the village ruins. 
Sasha. Right to the end, fought like one of the gods themselves. Warhammer, claws, teeth. Whatever that damn Kajik could do. But one of the Justicars blinded him with a flask. And a group of them managed to overwhelm Kara before she could help. Nor should you. Command is difficult. But we weren't just some garrison of the Mordens. Friends. And their deaths are on my hands. Safety. But one of the elves ran out, and her back was turned. The sound of combat died away. And for a few moments, we just lay there on the ground, waiting for the end to come. My apologies, Traveler. I, I need a moment. Retelling this was more difficult than I expected. It's been a long time. I... I could hear Tanwin wheezing. A terrible, airy noise as she breathed through her wounds. The blood was pouring out of me just as fast. As for the Felmore, they pulled back. But I could hear someone approaching. One of their commanders came into view. At first I thought he was going to finish us off. He just stood there, his brow furrowed, staring down at us as if he'd never seen a person die before, as if we were objects for him to study. But in the end, there was nothing I could do. I used the last of my strength to pull myself over to where Tan was lying. We'd come from the same village, fought for years at each other's side. She managed to squeeze my hand softly, just once, before I heard her breathe her last. The darkness took me. Possibly. I suppose the hardest part is that I'll never know. She disappeared, never to be heard of again. Perhaps she did keep her word, but was killed herself. Maybe she thought we could deal with the larger force. Maybe the group we were to intercept had changed, or someone tipped them off we were in the area. Maybe there was no Lavella Dientus. It was a Dominion rules from the beginning. It doesn't matter anymore. What's done is done. I awoke to find myself chained to the back of a rusted cage. I was delirious. Half dead, really. And the agony of losing all of them had taken its toll. But still, somehow I clung to life. It was slow and painful. But as the Dominion crowed over their new prison, I began to recover. Eventually, I was handed over to a scouting band and taken to one of the camps. Your average prison is usually just an extension of the local fort or castle. A couple of cells just out of the walls with some guards to patrol it. The Dominion, though, they built them to last. No doubt with magic at their aid. The camps were designed to be in the most hostile areas available, ensuring that if someone did manage to escape, they wouldn't make it on their own. I spent the first few months carefully examining the defenses. It'd be no easy task. Large reinforced metal barriers, three rings deep, kept everyone locked tightly behind them. Spells or explosives would have barely made a dent. And the Justicars were everywhere, always watching. Some people were cracked just under the stress. Then, well, then there were the beatings, torture, executions. The Dominion prides itself on being cultured and superior. But in reality, this is just a facade. They may be even more cruel than the Dwemer. Life in the camps wasn't so bad at first. They'd bring you just enough food to keep you alive. 
A mysterious slop that tastes like boiled leather. I was in a bunker with about a hundred others. Mostly red guards, but there were some orcs as well. Even a Bosmer, though he didn't last long. As you slowly begin to waste away, the lethargy ensures that prisoners are docile. Then, your biggest enemy is time. But every now and again, there needed to be a reminder of how things worked in the established order. It was a couple of weeks after I'd been captured before I saw this demonstrated. The Justicars came into each bunker in force and pulled us all out in the middle of the night. Some of us didn't even have time to dress, and the Alakir can be very cold at night. They brought out a Khajiit. Pathetic little thing. Whimpering and emaciated. They looked like they were close to death as it is. After a short speech from the Kep's captain, a group of Justicars set to work on that poor cat. No magic at first, just beating every inch of them. And we just stood there, silent, except for the cries as the Khajiit was beaten to death. That is what the Thalmor had reduced us to. was unnecessary and cruel. Sometimes it wasn't even prompted. Maybe our captors just got bored. Whatever it was, it always ended the same way. Anyone who made a sound, cried out, who dared to show their humanity, they were taken away and we never saw them again. Married couples had the worst of it, since the Falmor would separate us out. Everyone knew what they were doing, but we couldn't lift a finger. Some of the guards would even walk past the bunkers deliberately and just smile. To have your heart's desire in reach, your very being screaming out to protect the one you love. And you can't do a thing! <sighs> Another time, one sadistic mage in particular forced us all to watch as he flayed the scales off an Argonian with his dagger. But he's an emissary now, toasting with the nobles in Eleanor. Everyone knew what was happening, knew it was wrong, but they did nothing. Why? Because in the end, it's not the Thalmor who we struggle against, but ourselves. And Apathy Traveler is death. Even now, here in the free north, no one pays any mind when someone gets taken in the night, whisked away to an untimely end in Northwatch. Life just goes on. I didn't. I spent a better part of two years in that cursed place. Two years. Small amount of time for some, but many good people were behind those gates. Few returned. By the time the resistance moved through, the Great War had already ended. The Dominion was pulling its forces back. Talks had begun over the Concordat. All very neat for the nobles of Imperial City, but they hadn't lived through what we'd seen. Those who could still stand ran to the gates. Braced strangers. So glad to see anyone other than a cursed Altmer. Many were so weak, however, they couldn't even stand up. They just stared at you. Hollow, empty eyes. I was fortunate enough to have some strength left. My leg had been broken in a beating, but I could still walk. The moment I stepped out of the gates, I... I... I'm not ashamed to admit that I cried. I wept for my brothers and sisters, for our home, and for all that had perished at the Dominion's hands. It was morning then, looking out at the sun poking over the edge of the horizon, illuminating the sands. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Freedom. They had beaten us, they tortured us, and they hadn't broken us. After everything we endured, there was victory in that, I think. I stayed to help my kinsmen nurse those who were in need of care back to health. 
Or at least, ease their passing. Bit by bit, the camp was torn down and we scattered to the winds along with it. Nothing remains of what stood there now. As am I. Every soldier knows when their time is up, and had things turned out differently, I would have gladly laid down my life for any of my team. Gladly step between a sword and simple travels on the road. But things happened as they did. There's no use in trying to change it. I mourn for my friends, my home, all those who suffer in war. But if Satakal finds me worthy, perhaps I'll see them again on distant shores. Walk well, traveler.